Hi. I thought it'd be interesting to go through um, the different pen models to see the design changes that occurred over the years. So this is from what I believe 2009 for the EP1. If I'm not mistaken, it was 2009 or 2010 when it was launched. And of course, uh, the PenF, which was launched in uh, 2016. So that's six years of design, or seven, uh, that we can go through just to, to see what the differences are and how things changed. Which is kind of interesting for me, of course, because I collect the pen cameras. Um, so yeah, let's begin with, um, with the EP1. This would be the one here. We're going to look at all of the sides, but I wanted to start with, um, with the, the front of the camera. So if we look at the front of the EP1, I believe this only came in this finish. Um, I could be wrong though. Uh, there might have been a special edition or a special color, but this was the one that I was able to get. Um, and all of the ones that I've seen subsequently were this finish, this silver finish. So we see the same handle between the EP1 and the EP2. And um, other than the finish, I see no design changes to the front of the camera. And so, of course, the EP2 keeps the same uh, stereo microphones uh, mounted on the front, or um, the inputs are located on the front, rather the, the top bezel. It's the same shape, perhaps a slightly um, steeper angle, angle for, <laughs> for the EP2 as the bezel goes up over here. The lens release, it's the same thing. The, um, the status light, or it could also be the infrared uh, light, that's there in the same spot. The, um, the Micro Four Thirds uh, brand is right there in the same spot. So yeah, let's go on to the EP3. And uh, on the EP3, we've got a bit of a difference. Um, on the EP3, they had a removable handle. And... Um, you can see the edge of it uh, protruding from the side of the camera a little bit because you could unscrew it no and so I actually have both grips for it this would be the grip that I typically use on the camera you see right here um, but I mounted this one back on it just because that was the standard one and uh, we could see the design difference a little better um, that way um, so it's got a bit more of a, a grip for the fingers here and then it's got uh, the infrared light that has moved over here and of course this might also be able to be controlled with uh, a remote control and um, the microphone inputs are no longer here they moved them to the top but we'll see that when we look at the top um, the lens release button is the same the logo is the same yeah. Let's go on to the um, EP5, which is here. Um, Olympus skipped over the EP4 as a model number because they believe the number 4 is unlucky. <laughs> and uh, so they skipped over the EP4 and they went right to the EP5. Uh, here we see a different grip once again. This one's a bit angled like this, you see. If you compare it to the EP3, which is straight up and down, not quite at the middle, but uh, it's very much straight up and down. This one is uh, is is, uh, is a bit uh, inclined, and it's also thicker, which we'll see when we look at them uh, from the top. It's also thicker than the the other grips that came with the cameras, all of them up to this point. It's also extending a bit from the edge of the camera. Ooh, there's a bit of lint from my sweater. Um, so it's also extending a bit from the edge of the camera. Now, the EP5 also came with these little things that, that you attach the strap to, the neck strap. But since I don't use a neck strap, and I've used this camera extensively uh, in the past couple of years actually, 
I've shot I think over 65,000 frames with it I took them off because they're they're bothering me so they, they, I don't like the sound they make when I grip the camera and they get in the way of my fingers because I tend to grip the camera a bit differently sort of hug it in my hands or cup it like this in my hands right um, uh, now you see here while the logo remain in the same spot they've changed the shape of the lens release button it sort of matches well not sort of but it actually matches the the, the back the black matte finish of the camera and uh, now we also see a front dial extending from the camera here and we see uh, a different shape once again to the bezel now it's going up even more steeply so if you look at the angle of this uh, from the first EP1 through the EP2, EP3, EP5, and then the EP, the pen F. I was going to say EP, but it's not EP, it's pen F. You can see that it's just, it keeps going up and it's steeper and it's taller. So this one is much taller than this one, for example. Even the writing, Olympus Pen, is bigger on that camera on the latest the, the most recent model of the pen and we see they've also changed the position of the uh, the status light and the infrared illuminator perhaps the remote control I've never used the remote control with the pen camera so that's why I'm not sure um, but perhaps at some point in the future I will use one because I do have one so I just I've never used it uh, yeah, so they changed the position. It's now here and it's enclosed in this beautiful aluminum circular frame. Yeah, overall, the Pen F design is much more refined. Uh, I mean, this was great, great design. Um, according to me, of course, I mean, it, this is my aesthetic, but I, I loved the design of these cameras. That's why I, I bought them. That's why I used them, because I just love the design and I love their capabilities. But we're talking about the design now. So, um, yeah, of course, these little thingamajigs for attaching the next strap are here again, but I think I'm going to take them off this camera as well, because this is now my primary camera, and they, they do this, this sound that, that, that annoys me, and they get in the way of my fingers, so I'm probably going to take them off. And I'll stick them on the EP5, because I don't know what I did with the ones that came with this camera. I think I put them somewhere, and... They're well put away somewhere. <laughs> All right. Well, why don't we switch to the top of the camera, maybe, or the back? Let's do the back of the camera, and then we'll look at the top, bottom, and yeah, the sides if we need to. Okay. Before I turn the pen F over, I realized that I didn't talk about two things present on its front that were not present on the other cameras. Of course, this is the uh, creative mode dial that allows you to shoot in various modes such as black and white or various uh, filters um, and also special color modes and this is of course the depth of field preview button which is fairly useful and um, it's it's neat to have of course you can program this button to do whatever you want it to do uh, that's the cool thing about Olympus camera so you can switch it to perhaps take you to manual focus mode in case you want to focus manually and then switch you back to autofocus um, so there's a lot of things you can do with Olympus cameras. And then, of course, you have a ton more dials that you can see, but we'll get to those in a bit. Right, let's have a look at the back of the cameras. So we've got, I believe, well, no, no, not quite. Uh, from my experience, although the, the display looks the same between the pen, the EP1 and the EP2, I believe the EP2s has a bit more resolution than the EP1s, and then the resolution really goes up with the EP3. And then, of course, the EP5 and the Pen F, I mean, the resolution just jumps up tremendously from, from this model to this model, and from even from this model to this one. It's wonderful. I have no complaints, really. But you could really see um, that the resolution was just getting started on, on these particular models. Uh, so. All of the menu options, the writing is a lot bigger. You can see the individual pixels in the display in these. 
but really I had no complaints when you displayed the the actual photos you could see what you needed to see um, so I was I was happy with them um, it's got pretty much the same um, button display or the same button display the same button layout is what I'm trying to say between the two cameras um, and I loved it really it was a very simple layout and it was very easy to get to everything that you needed and of course this little dial also turns you see so you could rotate it with your fingers to, to, to dial in a setting not only could you press it up down left right but you could rotate it and this applies to all of the uh, pen cameras well these ones don't have a rotary dial anymore it's just up down left right but then of course these ones have a touch screen this one also has a touch screen by the way but it, it kept uh, that rotary dial uh, uh, at that point I, um, um, but this was neat I love this little dial it allowed you know when you're in aperture priority mode you can quickly switch the aperture or when you're in shutter mode you can quickly uh, change the shutter speed now of course when I started using my pen cameras in the studio which I did um, I really I found that I needed to have um, both the front and a rear dial which the EP5 has I mean this was huge for me because in the studio of course you shoot in manual mode and then you want to be able to adjust both the aperture and the shutter speed uh, accordingly and um, with these cameras you had to press I believe on a function button or go somewhere in a super control menu to get to the option to switch the shutter speed and so forth but it was so much easier to to have two dials on the EP5 it just made my studio work a lot a lot easier and uh, yeah you can control your studio flashes if they're Olympus flashes wirelessly with the pen cameras now of course you need a flash to do so um, and the flash only came into its own on the EP3 which has the built-in flash and the EP5 of course and the pen F comes with a separate tiny little flash that you might have seen in my unboxing video um, of it yeah one thing that I look forward to using now is the built-in viewfinder on the pen F because I had the um, articulating viewfinder the VF2 actually that I'd been using uh, on the EP2, EP3 and EP5 which plugged into this special port here the accessory port or advanced port AP yeah I'm really bad with names so particular names of, of, of particular features uh, I'm not good at remembering them so yeah but thank goodness I know how to use the camera so that's that's a good thing um, right let's look a bit at the EP3 um, this one of course uh, started to do video not that this one couldn't do video as well um, but uh, this one started to do full high definition video this one only did 720p video and I can't recall if EP1 did video I believe it did I believe it did 720p video as well right um, but this one did full high definition and it had face tracking it, so you you really got it had more focus points so you really got into everything so it has a dedicated video button right there and um, uh, we were uh, um, what am I trying to say other than that uh, nothing really actually I'm looking at the button layout and while they're, they've changed the position of some of the things it's the same button layout if you look at this you have one two three four buttons one two three four buttons you have two buttons here and then of course the, the dial um, that rotates and also goes up down left right this of course is the, 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 the flash release button so that pops the flash there we go the same thing happens on the EP5 so, whoa yeah pops it up kind of forcefully because um, it releases a mechanism and it's spring-loaded so yeah it really pops up quite fast if you look actually at the button layout of the pen F you see that it's been simplified at least here it's um, you've got some a bit of symmetry going on here so they've made um, this dial a bit smaller if I'm not mistaken 
just a tad smaller. They've changed some of the functions around and they put the buttons in each, at each corner. So that's kind of neat. And then you have the magnification button, of course, there. And the function button, which is present here, that allows you to switch between this actually, when you switch it back and forth, it switches the functions of some of the dials and you get to select what it switches and everything. Yeah, it's kind of neat. So they moved that here. And they added a second function button here really cool stuff and of course because you have a built-in viewfinder now or um, eye, eyepiece whatever you want to call it the diopter adjustment uh, has to be on the camera body as well so that's kind of neat um, yeah of course the record button is in about the same spot if you look at the EP3 and the EP5 but here it's also got that function lever that you can activate uh, the record button here is a separate one on the top, but we'll look at that. Yeah. Cool. Let's look at the top then. Right. Well, the tops look a bit different though now because I've, they've got these little... Let's take them out so you can see this a little better. Okay, good. So, I'm not a stickler for keeping that little piece of plastic there. I'm much more interested in the functionality of the cameras than a little bit eaty piece of plastic. Um, so, right. <laughs> uh, at the time, I really loved this recessed dial for the mode. It's really neat and it's present on the EP1 and the EP2. Um, it's a very simple layout. <laughs> simple little on off switch here, the uh, sensor cleaning light, the shutter button, exposure adjustment. Very, very neat. Um, so you would press down on that and then you would rotate the, the, the rear dial and it would uh, change the exposure value uh, up or down as you needed it. Uh, one thing I would point out, uh, which you probably can't see now because I've turned the cameras, but uh, the EP2 is a bit taller than the EP1. And that's because, and it's taller right here, and that's because it has that accessory port right there, uh, which the EP1 did not have. So the EP1 did not have an accessory port. <laughs> and when I bought it, actually, um, one thing I want to do is like, okay, well, let me put in the, uh, let me hook in the, uh, the viewfinder, um, and I started to connect it and I realized, wait a minute, there is no accessory port. So that's, that was one thing that they introduced with the EP2, the ability to have that, uh, accessory port where you could hook up a microphone as well and uh, different kinds of viewfinders. Um, so it was kind of neat. Um, yeah, and this continued through to the EP5. Now, of course, the accessory port is gone because the the Pen F has uh, other inputs, uh, and it also has a built-in viewfinder. So there's no need, no longer a need for that. Now, here's the microphone inputs that we were talking about. Olympus cameras, all I believe, come with stereo microphones built in. So we have them on top here, here, and here. And of course, on the EP1 and the EP2, they were on the front, just there. Um, I love this this little shiny bezel here, chromed bezel um, with the writing there, Olympus Pen. And there we go. And uh, well, the EP5 had an all black finish, so it was no longer chromed. Although, if you got this in the uh, silver finish, this one was probably chromed. So, yeah. Now that bezel is no longer present in the Pen F because now the badging is right on top. It says Pen F right there. Um, and they had to make room for all of these buttons and dials and everything. I mean, if you look at the Pen F, it's got a ton of dials, right? This is the on off switch. Uh, it's got the mode dial right here, which has a lock as well. It's got this function dial here, which actually by default lets you adjust the histogram of the photograph before, not the histogram, sorry, the, the curves 
um, the other curves before you take the image so you can do that right in camera it's got that function dial uh, the function button there it's got the rear dial there it's got the exposure value adjuster right here um, it's got of course the shutter button the shutter button with the uh, the front dial built right around it and it's got the video function right there which you can, and you can program these things uh, to do a bunch of other things so each dial here and here and there and various buttons there and the function button there which by the way yeah you didn't get it on the other cameras well you had one function button now you get one here one there and just buttons everywhere and you can program all of them to do um, different things than their default functions which is really cool right let's have a look at the uh, the uh, bottoms of the cameras they're quite similar um, the only differences I would point out that are significant is that on the pen F you have um, a different mechanism for the latch so you actually push the latch closed it's not a pop open pop close kind of thing like on these other cameras right so like on the EP5 you would have to and all on the other ones you would do it like this and that closes on the pen F you have to pull that and then once you you have to you know pull that little latch closed and it perhaps it's a little more secure that way yeah one thing I would point out to you though which is kind of neat when it comes to the pen F is that I would invite you to look for screws or rather the lack of screws whereas on these cameras you see all of the little screws that are holding the bottom plate to the camera right including on the AP5 where are the screws on the pen F and that's a good question I invite you to find that out there's a, a video out there of how they make the pen F the design of this camera is really so good it's so refined some people feel it's too crowded but that's their problem really I just I love it and so this is yet one other example of how much attention went into the making of this camera yeah let's have a look at the sides uh, only one of the sides of course which is where the ports are that's the uh, the one that uh, we need to look at here so this is the EP1 and it's a simple door that you open uh, with your nail and it's got of course the Olympus USB port which is different from other ports and the HDMI out and there we go EP2 it's the same and there we go EP3 it's a door uh, that works differently because we've got the grip which extends a bit over its side so you have to open it a bit and then you pull it outward like this you see how the latches extend and then you can open it like that and then once again USB and HDMI and then you push it in like that and it locks into place EP5 we've got once again the uh, Olympus USB and then we've got a tiny little HDMI port which has changed from the other one so that is truly tiny <laughs> but the Olympus uh, USB connection stays the same because this is where they connect it to the Olympus workspace app and the capture app and this is where you get to do for more updates to the camera and everything so the yeah, Olympus has had this different USB connection ooh, from as long as I can remember for as long as I can remember so there we go so this is the the door here swings open once again so we've got the Olympus USB and the HDMI no microphone input so remember that
I people always complain, but I just got no microphone input. Um, well, about cameras in general, not just the Pen F4, the the pen line of cameras. Um, they tend to get hung up on these things that don't really matter. Why would you care if it's got no microphone input, really, when you can simply use an external mic, or you can just use a very inexpensive lav mic that you hook up to your phone, and then you sync the audio so easily in um, a lot of apps, let you sync the audio to the video. What's the problem? I don't, I don't really see one. Now, what I've done here is I've put them um, right next to each other and I've lined them up with a ruler because I want you to see that there are differences in the width of the cameras. Most notably the Pen F, which is a little wider by a few millimeters than the rest of the cameras. And the way we can see that is, let's put the ruler on the other side. And Well, perhaps we can't see it like that. Maybe at the top. There we go. If we attempt to line it up like this, we can see how the pen F is longer than the EP5, for example. How the EP3 is even a bit shorter than the EP5, you see because uh, that will uh, loop um, for the uh, strap extends out by a millimeter underneath the ruler and this one doesn't. This one is even a bit shorter than the EP3. This is the EP2 and the EP1 is even slightly shorter than the EP2. Just slightly mind you, just a little tiny bit. Because um, if I do this, you see, I'm pivoting on one of the uh, on one of the um, um, neck strap attachments. So to me, for example, this is interesting because it just, I, I love to see the design differences that they went through. It's just very, very subtle differences. Of course, there's a huge design difference between this and the rest of the pen cameras, but you can see the gradual advancement um, toward the newest model. Very neat. Hmm. Yeah. And you can see how the top, I mean this is interesting because you look most often at the top of the camera, so think about that for a bit. When you're holding the camera in your hand, what you look at is the back of it and the top, but most often it's the top because you're putting it up to your eye, perhaps, or you're looking at the screen and you lower it down to see what's in front of you, and it's the top, it's the share button that you see most often. So it's neat to see how the design DNA changed there. And you see this piece of, 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 of um, well, I believe this one's plastic here. Well, this top piece, let's call it the top piece, how it's kept the same trapezoidal shape. It goes down and it narrows down a bit and it rounds the, the bottom the, at the side here. It's the same design for the EP2. Of course, keep in mind the top of the EP2 is taller because they had to put in the accessory port. So you don't see it from this angle, but this one's a little taller. And it's the same design here. Now for the EP3, they changed it yet again. The mode dial went there. This is now where the flash resides. The microphones came here. They still have an accessory port, so they really squeezed those circuitry, the circuitry in there. Now they changed it, even though they kept the same basic shape, which is sort of trapezoidal, and then going back again. Um, uh, they they introduced this little uh, bevel here uh, for the on-off button. They made this thinner, uh, the edge around the shutter button. The exposure value button now became a function button. Um, <laughs> the way they marked uh, the sensor plate changed. So here it's inscribed, here it's painted. This has stayed the same, although the shape of the microphone inputs has changed. So here we have them 
very well defined here they're just circular here we have just two cutouts into the metal frame because this is full metal um, the shutter button changed once again here it's a very different shape and feel this is knurled metal and it's surrounded by metal but it's a different texture and now that bevel that was cut out for the on off switch was changed once again because the on off switch actually turned into a switch not a button over here the mode dial was extended upward here you see so it's raised here it's almost at the level of the top and it's knurled again this one is not knurled it's just inscribed this one also has very slight knurling it's just it's lovely <laughs> and here of course all of the rules changed when it came to the pen f i mean this is this is where the on off switch is we can still see the basic design DNA though, and this is what I love. Remember this plate, right? Look at the pen F, you can still see it. There it is. Goes around, and while it doesn't, it gets slightly thinner here, it doesn't get as thin as it does on the other cameras, but it still rounds the corner. So it's the same basic design here, you see it? It's just changed to accommodate all of these things. And look how they carried it through the viewfinder, the top of the viewfinder. They wanted to keep that same shape. You see? And so they allowed for the, the viewfinder, the eye the eyepiece to, to, to raise up a little bit because they had to squeeze in all of this stuff in here into the small frame. I mean this camera is jam-packed with stuff. It's amazing. But they still wanted to keep this design DNA, so it's lovely. Yeah, and you can see the same design DNA uh, on the OMD cameras. Someday, perhaps I'll I'll try it if I get my hands on a, on an analog PNF, a film PNF. I'll try to compare it to to the digital PNF and see see uh, how it compares. It's very neat. Yeah, and of course on the shutter button here you have a, a, a manual release that you can actually press like they had in the old studios. It's actually a wire that goes through a sleeve and it, you screw it into this and it depresses the shutter button manually, but you can still do it remotely. I used to have one of those buttons. I, I don't know what I did with it way back in ooh, at least 15 years ago, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> and the function button on the EP5 became the record button. And it was moved here. Yeah. So I, I really hope you can see this in uh, in 4K because I am filming it in 4K and you can look at these details and see them carefully. Here the mode dial is, is raised once again as are all of the buttons except for the, well, even the exposure value is raised. Yeah, that's right. The on-off button is not raised and the record button is not raised but all the rest are. Huh. And this one of course has that lock it's like a ballpoint pen top. It locks in so you don't accidentally switch the mode. And one last thing that I want to point out, if you look at the flash connection between all of them, what's different? Well, there are four, well, technically five connection points here. But I'm talking about the four tiny connection points. We only had three on all these cameras and all, we have four. So there's extra ways for the flash to communicate with the camera here. I suppose I should uh, show you how the grip fits onto the EP3 a bit differently because that's this is the grip that I use with that camera. So let me take it out of the lineup. And remove excuse me before I put the other grip on I wanted to show you something if you look at the design 
I love how it's carried out. It's still the same design. If you, you can even use this camera without a grip if you want to. Although it might be a little slippery for some people, but I like it. And it's the same design that then was carried out into the Penef. Hmm. Actually curious about something. Let me see something here. Just roughly. Just a rough measurement here. I don't have calipers here, so it's about 4.3, 4.4, and it's um, right because the penf is a bit longer by a couple of millimeters. This is now 4.6, 4.7, if I'm not mistaken. Although you can't really tell by looking at this that this one's just a bit longer here. <laughs> So yeah, I wanted to show you that little design. Now let me put the grip on it now. Right. Don't tighten it too much. I mean, it's uh, there. We go. That should be enough. There we go. And it's uh, it's much more grippy now. It's unbelievable how comfortable it is to hold it like this. Yeah, very comfortable. Out of all of the pens, well, I haven't used the pen half extensively, so I don't know how that feels in my hand. But I would say because of this little tiny grip here. This camera is very comfortable to use uh, and to hold even with larger lenses to hold it in hand. Uh, it kind of makes you wonder, well, it doesn't make you wonder, it's okay. I haven't used the pen enough to, to be able to say um, how that feels in the hand with a heavier lens. But one thing that I do want to well, let me, let me show you one more thing. I mean, this video is getting ridiculously long already, but let me show you one more thing. There is a non-powered grip for the pen app that you can get. I haven't gotten my hands on one of those, so I don't know what it feels like. But I did buy a non-powered grip for the EP5. Now, this is off of AliExpress, I think. Um, but it's machine metal. I mean, it's machined metal, so it's... Uh, it's very sturdy. It's got this uh, Arca plate, um, and I tried it on the EP5, but I, I just couldn't. I couldn't stomach it for my needs. It just wasn't what I was looking for um, from the camera. It just makes it. And I don't know if that's the case for the other grip as well. Beats me. I haven't, um, excuse me, let me put it in focus here. There. You still have access to the battery door, but it's now kind of a ridiculous thing to get in there. It's just, it's harder because it's depressed by quite a bit. Although the ability to just simply tack it onto a, um, a tripod I suppose makes it easier when you're, you know, uh, setting the camera up for long exposures or maybe recording video with it. But this is, this is what I found ridiculous. It just made me put a lot more pressure on this rubber grip here, which is not my cup of tea. I, I, I think I would have issues with the glue, uh, but putting this much pressure on it in order to grip it properly now. And now the shutter button, the shutter button is way over here. It's, it's ridiculous. I mean, you may be able to hold the camera better, although it's doubtful. It's, I guess you could hold it like this, but then how do you? You'd have to use the shutter button with your, with your thumb, and I find that intolerable. So, I never, I never used this grip. 
I just I have it, but it's yeah, it's a good thing. It was inexpensive. Um, I don't use it. I don't like it. So yeah, I mean, there's some people maybe whose hands work differently than mine. Maybe they're smaller or bigger. Who knows what? And they can use these things to more effect. But ooh, that made a lot of noise. But as far as I'm concerned, thanks, but no thanks. So yes, here let's line them up again so you can see the difference in size. There we go. <laughs> I hope you found it useful or at least entertaining. And uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.